Hi, it's Thursday, and it's time again for Bible study, amen? And as usual, children of God, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the Word of God, amen? And today, we're going to talk about God's amazing grace, amen? God's amazing grace. And please don't forget to share. We are going through some turmoilous times. Share with everyone that you know. Have your pencil and your paper to take down the scriptures so you can just study on your own because we got to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. So again, today's topic is amazing grace. And I'm going to do a comparison. Amen. With why we should be grateful that we're under grace with God right now and not like it was back in the old days under the old covenant where God would punish us immediately when you did something wrong. And so we're going to take a look at Numbers chapter 16 and we're starting from the 12th verse and I'm going to read this to you and I want you to even on your own, read from verses 1 through 12, just to get the full picture. I started at 12 because it will be a lot of reading, and I wanted you to get the gist of what's going on. So Moses is in the wilderness, delivering the children of, of Israel from bondage. And of course, like with every situation, when you get too much of us together, there's always talk. Somebody's thinking somebody's being slighted. Somebody thinking somebody's being the boss of them, that type of thing. And so we have a, a group, Cora being one of them, and Dathan and, and Abraham, that decided that they don't like the way Moses is doing things, that they can do it better because Moses got no more gifting and talents than they do, but he's trying to be the boss of them. Amen? And so... We're going to pick up with verse 12 where the complaining and the griping and the stuff is going on and God has to get involved and say, okay, I'm going to let you know to whom I'm standing for and what will happen to the others who complain. So we'll pick up with verse 12. Then Moses summoned Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, but they replied, we refuse to come before you. Isn't it enough that you brought us out of Egypt, a land flowing with milk and honey, to kill us here in this in this wilderness, and that you now treat us like your subjects? What's more, you haven't brought us into another land flowing with milk and honey. You haven't given us a new homeland with fields and vineyards. Are you trying to fool these men? We will not come. And that's because... Moses called them up to me at a meeting to find out what is going on, why he's hearing all this murmuring and talking and stuff going on. Verse 15. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, do not accept their grain offerings. I have not taken so much as a donkey from them, and I have never heard a single one of them. And Moses said to Korah, you and all your followers must come here tomorrow and present yourselves before the Lord. Aaron will also be here. You and each of your 250 followers must prepare an incense burner and put incense on it so you can all present them before the Lord. Aaron will also bring his incense burner. So each of these men prepared an incense burner, lit the fire, and placed incense on it. Then they all stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. With Moses and Aaron. Meanwhile, Korah had stirred up the entire community against Moses and Aaron, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to the whole community. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Get away from all these people so they so that I may instantly destroy them. Saints of God. We should be grateful for amazing grace. God doesn't instantly destroy us anymore like he did back then. So verse 22. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. Oh God, they pleaded. You are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry with all the people when only one man sins? And the Lord said to Moses, Then tell all the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. 
So Moses got up and rushed over to the tents of Dathan and Abiram, followed by the elders of Israel. Quick, he told the people, get away from the tents of these wicked men and don't touch anything that belongs to them. If you do, you will be destroyed for their sins. So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan and Abiram. Then Dathan and Abram came out and stood at the entrance of their tents together with their wives and children and little ones. And Moses said, this is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things that I have done, for I have not done them on my own. If these men die a natural death, or if, if nothing unusual happens, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord does something entirely new and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them and all their belongings and they go down alive into the grave, then you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen, verse 31. He had hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men along with their households and all their followers who were standing with them and everything they owned. So they went down alive into the grave along with all their belongings. The earth closed over them and they all vanished from among the people of Israel. All the people around them fled when they heard their screams. The earth will swallow us too, they cried. Then, then fire blazed forth from the Lord and burned up the 250 men who were offering incense. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eliezer, son of Aaron, the priest, to pull all the incense burners from the fire, for they are holy. Also tell him to scatter the burning coals. Take the incense burners of these men who have sinned at the cost of their uh, at the cost of their lives, and hammer the metal into a tin sheet to overlay the altar. Since these burners were used in the Lord's presence, they have become holy. Let them serve as a warning to the people of Israel. So Eliezer the priest collected the 250 bronze incense burners that had been used by the men who died in the fire and the bronze were hammered into a thin sheet to overlay the altar. This would warn the Israelites that no unauthorized person, no one who was not a descendant of Aaron, should ever enter the Lord's presence to burn incense. If anyone did, the, the same thing would happen to him as happened to Korah and his followers. So the Lord instructions to Moses were carried out. But the very next morning, oh people, let us recognize when we're wrong, turn from it and don't repeat it. Because listen, verse 41 says, but the very next morning, the whole community of Israel began muttering again against Moses and Aaron saying, you have killed the Lord's people. As the community gathered to protest against Moses and Aaron, they turned towards the tabernacle and saw that the cloud had covered it and the glorious presence of the Lord appeared. Oh, come on, somebody. Verse 43, Moses and Aaron came and stood in front of the tabernacle and the Lord said to Moses, get away from all these people so that I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. And Moses said to Aaron, quick, take an incense burner and place burning coals on it from the altar. Lay incense on it and carry it out among the people to purify them and make them right with the Lord. The Lord's anger is blazing against them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses told him and ran out among the people. The plague had already began to strike down the people, but Aaron burned the incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stopped. But one thousand, but verse forty-nine says, but fourteen thousand seven hundred people died in that plague, in addition to those who had died in the affair involving Korah. Then because the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. Children of God, aren't you glad 
Praise be to God that we're under grace, God's amazing grace. Because if it was not so, the first time that we slipped and did a sin or did or said something that was not pleasing in God's sight, he could have just taken us out. We all would have been dead. Amen. First Samuel 15, 22 says, but Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. What are we doing when God speaks to us? Are we being obedient? Are we walking the way we're supposed to walk? Do we recognize that his grace is sufficient? Do we recognize that if it was not for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't be where we are now? We didn't do this stuff on our own. It was God's grace and mercy. Oh, come on, somebody. Psalms 19. 17 to 14 says, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even the honey dripping from the comb. Oh, come on, somebody. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? We can't, right? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. We all need to throw our hands up and say to God, cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. Oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Saints of God, we got to get serious about this thing. God's amazing grace. Say, hey, come on, somebody. Amen. Let the words of her mouth and the meditation of her hearts be acceptable to his sight. Amen. Psalms 13, 13. And this is the CEV says, I'm sorry, Proverbs 13, 13. And this is the CEV that says, if you reject God's teaching, you will pay the price. If you obey his commands, you will be rewarded. Our reward is is exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think because God is not a man that give rewards on the way that we think. Everlasting life, everlasting joy, everlasting peace is one is some of the things that we know we're going to get. The Bible says he's going to prepare a place for us and wherever he is, we will be there also. So we will have a place. We will get crowns for doing the work. Oh, come on, somebody. God's amazing grace. Romans 6, 14 says, for sin will have no dominion over you since you were not under law, but under grace, God's grace. Amen. John 1, 16, the ESV says, and from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. 2 Timothy 4, 22, 2 Timothy 4, 22 says, May the Lord be with your spirit and may his grace be with all of you. We need to recognize that God's amazing grace gives us all that we need. We need to just relax and just know that even though there is wars going on around us, we have God's amazing grace upon our lives. We need to settle in it. Don't be distraught. Be on your post and pray. See God's face. Be comforted that he's got you. Amen. God's amazing grace. Let's move on now. We're going to go to prayer. Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni, Shackleford, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra, Georgette, Norma, Anthony, Julian, Walker and family, Elijah, Echo, Don, Lee, Maria, Patrick, 
Isabel Roberts, James, we got two James, Lorraine, Grace, Mario, Romario, Leone, Tracy, Lee, Marlene, Franklin, Donna, Jean, Wright family, Carolyn, Charles, Elvis, CJ, Nash, the third, Ashley family, Francisco, Harris family, Maxine, Marwin family, Justin, Victoria, Andre, Madeline, Turner. We are praying for, of course, James Rock, TJ, JD, Abadias, Harry, Ed, Malcolm, Denise, Yvonne, Michael, Moore family, Lloyd, Grant, Indy Grant, Doriel, Paulette, Lucinda, Linda, and Regina. We're praying for all the countries. We're praying for Russia. We're praying for the Ukraine. We're praying for Nigeria. We're praying for Israel. We're praying for Kenya. We're praying for Ethiopia. We're praying for South Africa. We're praying for Puerto Rico. We need to stay on our post. We're in the kingdom building business with our father. We all have responsibilities. Let us always be busy about what God wants us to be busy about. Let's not just be running to and fro aimlessly, but with purpose and conviction of who we are. Let's pray. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, I pray over every name, every country, every situation, Lord God. You know everything. We know that you are in control. Just like you did, you said in your word back in the days of Pharaoh, where it was clear that you hardened Pharaoh's heart when Moses went to him to let your people go. Father God, we know you are in control. You were in control then and you're in control now. Lord God, we surrender our hearts to you, our minds and our souls. Everything concerning you, Father God, concerns us and everything concerns us concerns you. We declare right now that it is well, it is well, it is well. We are not going to be distressed or turned around. We're going to stay the course and keep our hands on the plow. Bless each and every person that I've mentioned, Lord God, and each and every country. We raise the bloodstained banner in this war and we say it must stop in the matchless name of Jesus, we declare. We thank you, Lord God, for hearing our petitions and doing our good, speedy work. In Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, children of God. Amazing grace. That's, we just thank God for it. Amazing grace. We don't get punished the, we, the, the way God used to do in the Old Testament. Amen. So we thank God for it. Be grateful. Have an attitude of gratitude. And know that God knows your heart. Be blessed. Have a wonderful weekend and see you again. Bye-bye now.